Hello and welcome to the show. Now, last week I did a video on my top 10 driving games of all time. And fair enough, quite a lot of you had questions about how come certain games hadn't made it onto the list, etc. I thought I would do a kind of a, a short list. These are the games that I were kind of contemplating putting on the list, got very, very close to making it onto the list, but at the end of the day, when I had to try and trim it down to a 10, this lot just slightly missed out. And now this list is just in alphabetical order, no particular order of preference. We start up first with uh, Automa Blister. Now, the actual top 10 list didn't really have very many sim racing games on it, and Automa Blister would be the closest sim racing game to getting on to that list for quite a number of reasons. First of all, I love the business model behind it. They've done a really, really good job. If you owned uh, Stock Car Extreme, you got upgraded to Automa Blister completely free. Which is, okay, yeah, I know it's it's still, it's largely based, I think it's in, probably based on the same engine, it's probably some graphical tweaks and so on, there's a lot more cars, etc. That's a pretty damn decent thing for them to be doing. I also love the way that they're doing the DLC, they're doing the DLC pass, you know, there's a season pass to the game, lots of games have that these days. But at the moment they're releasing a DLC a month uh, with it, some of it is, you know, just a track. Uh, I think they brought out Imola with various layouts, you know, classic layouts and so on. But some of it, like there's a, there's a Brit pack that comes with three tracks and a whole bunch of different cars. You put it all together and there's going to be quite a lot of DLC for that game. And it's not particularly expensive. If you want to buy bits individually, you're perfectly welcome to her to do that. So, yeah, done a really, really reasonable thing with the business model. Rather than a lot of sim racing games that like to charge you an absolute fortune. I love iRacing to bits. It's good fun to do proper serious racing, but it is incredibly expensive. Um, also, Automobilista has just the sheer number of vehicles from Formula Trucks now. They've got the Super Stadium trucks. They've got off-road cars. They've got, you know, single seaters. They've got classic Formula cars. They've got all sorts of different eras of Formula One vehicles. There's a huge amount, huge amounts to go racing. There will be something that you'll want to be racing on there and a great selection of tracks and perhaps tracks that uh, that you haven't that you haven't heard of before. A lot of Brazilian tracks and so on to uh, to go racing around, and you know a great physics model to uh, to build on. The downside to it is the downside that a lot of the sim, you know, actual sim racing games do struggle with in that there's a there's no career mode to it. There's no I must sit down and play this game for two or three hours like you get with well a lot of the games that made it onto the, the top ten list or just a lot of games in general. I we play a lot of Watch Dogs 2, for example, and I want to play mission after mission to get through that. Whereas with Automobile Blister, it's one of those things that uh, you kind of you, you kind of drop in and out every so often. I fancy having a drive, and it probably would be my go-to game. For, for you know some serious racing but there's just not that that catch that makes you want to keep playing for hours on end and progress etc because there is no career mode also on a side note i love that it lets you take any car to any track you know you saw with my formula trucks and a dirt circuit i've rally crossed a formula one car a little while ago i love that it is happy to let you do that you can try and take the formula one cars on a super stadium track and then they get broken very quickly but the game doesn't stop you from, <laughs> from doing that so that is a big plus in my book yeah of all the sim racing games i would definitely put or a blister right up there at uh, the very top up next we move on to beam ng drive yes the uh, fantastic crashing game I, I love beam and it is now starting to actually become a game the primary reason why it didn't make it on the top 10 list is it is still it's still you make your own fun on it there is it's still very much in development. It's in beta, I think, at the moment. I'm, I, I kind of give up keeping track of what's in alpha and beta. Uh, whatever. It's still in development at the moment. When it is completely finished and there is actual game to it rather than just crashing, I have no doubt that that would make its way into the top 10. However, at the moment, there is kind of a career. There, there's kind of the scenarios uh, stuff going on that's getting you know, more and more expanded on. We're now getting the campaigns starting to come through. And we did, you know, quite recently get the, was it the Rocky Start, I think they call it, campaign that is kind of vaguely looking like what the game was actually going to uh, to be with the whole earning money. And I'm assuming upgrading your car, buying new cars, competing events, etc. And that looks really, really interesting. It's just not there at the moment. Of course, you can't ignore the incredible physics, the incredible it's soft body physics, I believe is the correct term for it, and the crash damage that goes on with the vehicles. It's been a lot more optimized as the years have gone on. And, you know, the game doesn't chug horribly when you have lots of cars crashing into each other as, as much as it did. Uh, yeah, it's a huge amount of fun, a huge playground to mess about with car crashes and yeah, incredible, incredible, unrivaled vehicle damage. But yeah kind of a very very loose game you make your own fun with it a similar vein to automobilista really with that at the moment 
Up next, we have Driven to Destruction, or Test Drive Eve of Destruction, for the Americans watching. This is a classic PS2 game. I only ever played it for the first time quite recently, and it is a lot of fun. It is an awful lot of fun. If you like crashing, it is uh, it is excellent. Yeah, okay, it's not quite got beam levels of destruction, but this is a much, much older game for the, for the era that it was around. Pretty damn impressive damage on this one. And a huge amount of fascinating game modes. A huge amount. Well, I've only played a fair little bit at the beginning, I do believe that there is sort of caravan racing going on as as one of them you know it's just a huge amount of chaos can be brought in in driven to destruction which is which is always nice uh, one of the game modes when i was playing through it had you run kind of half a lap in one direction around a circuit stop turn around and then run the other way around the circuit there was sort of a, a sumo -y game mode pushing cars out there were some basic races you know sort of some figure of eights and, and some some tracks as well to, to go racing around. I loved just the, the little touches with the game. The way that the cars, you couldn't repair your cars up to full every time after you finish a race. You'd only repair them up to a certain amount. So over time, your car would wear out and you'd have to buy a new one. Of course, you'd be buying a new one to, you know, get a get a faster vehicle, etc. But I liked that the car would gradually wear down. I liked that you had, like, a little flag on your car if you won a round and so on. Just little details I really did quite like about this game. And, you know, it's all running on a PS2, a relatively old system. The downside, reason why it didn't make its way into the top 10, this one was probably one of the closest, I'll be, I'll be honest. It's like we have to trim a list down to just 10 games. Uh, yeah, this one this one lost out a little bit with, um, certainly for, for the actual races, it uh, wasn't quite as... Uh, Perhaps wasn't quite as exciting. Actual race tracks themselves weren't particularly weren't particularly exciting. Also, certainly the early stuff found relatively easy. I made a few cockups along the way, but uh, yeah, the races against AIs were, were relatively straightforward. So yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one, but uh, yeah, it would uh, slightly miss out. Up next, it is F1 2016. Now, all of the Codemasters games have been pretty damn good. The, I've, I've played all of them, in fact, and I have, I have very, very much enjoyed them. I picked out 2016 in particular. I like all of the new features that were added in this one. Kind of the more focus on the practice sessions. It gave you goals. It gave you targets to try and aim for, to, you know, to try and to improve your car, etc. And that was... It was nice to have those, and also, you know, would help newer players to the game, you know, learn tracks, learn the car, uh, etc., in a slightly more interesting way than just, say, go out and, and, and do some laps. It kind of gives you a vague direction as well as to what you want to be doing and, and how you want to be heading towards uh, the sessions. You know, the actual racing itself is... I say as good as ever. Again, one of the reasons why it uh, didn't quite make it up into the top ten. The AIs at times can be a little bit... A little bit weird. I can find it's quite easy to trick the AIs into getting stuck behind you. They're not very good at overtaking each other either. Again, 2016, better. Some of the past ones were quite bad in the AIs just kind of creating a train and going around the circuit. But uh, yeah, in 2016 they were better. However, they do still uh, tend to find themselves getting a little bit stuck uh, in in trains. It looks absolutely fantastic. And what 2016 does very very well is weather. Dynamic weather in the Formula 1 games is absolutely excellent. I hope like future Forza games and so on have as good a weather as 2016 does because, you know, you'll, you'll be racing along, you'll see the clouds starting to form around you. It'll be that moment of, can I make it to the finish line or am I going to have to pit for intermediates? Or, you know, you have to start on you know, a full wet track. At what point do you change to intermediates? Do you try and run it as long as possible so you can try and pit straight from wets to slicks if you think it's drying up really quickly? Can you keep the tyres alive? And all of that, that makes for a little bit more tactical, but a very, very exciting, a very, very enjoyable enjoyable race yeah it's not perfect and of course you know being a, a formula one game well you've only got one category of car to uh, go <laughs> go racing with whereas other games let's say Toka race driver for example uh, you've got a huge raft of different motorsports to pick from however yeah f1 2016 does a very very good job of uh, of doing formula one kind of a little bit of a shame that um you you kind of pick whatever team you want to go into at the start. You can go straight in at the top, which I feel is a little bit cheaty. I think it's much more fun if 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 the game kind of made you go from the bottom. But I also get that you know it wants to give people the opportunity to uh, drive for their for their favourite team rather than have to work through quite a few hours of racing. But that's just me on on, on that particular one. Yeah, of all the of all the Codemasters games, I'd probably put 2016 at the top there. It is a very very solid very solid Formula One racing game.
Up next, we have Flat Out Ultimate Carnage. Now, I would put Ultimate Carnage here ahead of Wreckfest, primarily because much like with BMG Drive, Wreckfest is still in the process of being made. And while, yes, it is essentially an, an updated uh, Flat Out, it's still uh, a fair way off. There's not so much of a career mode to speak of, etc. What is there is very good fun. I do enjoy messing around with Wreckfest, especially with mods and so on. However, yeah, there, there's no career mode as such, of course. Ultimate Carnage being a complete game, there is an awful lot to do in it. There is a lot of chaos. I love I love the party game. It's a great, great party game is, is Ultimate Carnage when you set it up with the darts and the high jump and the long jump and the curling and all of that shenanigans. A huge amount of fun can be had with this one and that's just the mini games you get to the actual racing it is uh plenty plenty crazy uh doing the races there's lots of crashes lots of explosions people get flung out of cars many bits of debris get thrown around on the track and it has crash alley crash alley is you could base the entire game in crash alley and i'd be perfectly happy i think it's just a fantastically crazy it suits flat out so perfectly well it's massive fun to uh, go racing around that one the reason why i didn't make my top 10 another this was a very very close call but one of my most abiding memories of ultimate carnage is just being frustrated at the ai just being angry at the ai uh, whether it be them suddenly cheating and catching up at the last minutes and just i it's one of those things it's just i personally haven't played ultimate carnage for a little while and i can't remember what it was about the ai but as soon as i thought about it i just remember getting really angry with their seeming to cheat a lot so <laughs> yeah it's it's just one of those little niggles as i said it was very very close to making it in the top 10 as well but uh yeah just that abiding memory of being irritated by them constantly and at times the physics and uh, some of the crashes with certainly with the demo derbies it sometimes um with the demo derby derbies work with whoever kind of hits hardest um, um, gets away with taking less damage or none, no damage and sometimes and that can be a little bit dodgy at, at times as well and just little things like that um, will keep it outside of the top 10 but it's definitely worth a mention if you haven't played a flat out game a classic flat out game go 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 and find one somewhere they're all excellent fun to uh, to play through our next game we have grid now this was a, an honorable mention in the actual top 10 list this doesn't make its way into the top 10 simply because of of Toka Race Driver. The original Toka Race Driver is just that bit more of a complete game. Grid would have been in the top 10 had Race Driver not because it is a very, very good game. I like the way that uh, that you play through the creek. You know, you start off with, with buying a car. You kind of build up a team to, to go through various events. And as you go through the calendar at some point in the year, you know, you have the, the Le Mans 24-hour race that you can take part in and then you... You, you know your year continues on afterwards and it is fantastic the problem is Toka race driver was better Toka race driver had just that better career mode to me personally it worked i i think uh partly because of the, i like the menus in in race driver grid also does quite a good job of feeling like a career but in, in actual race driver when you're flicking through the menus it's kind of like a, a a rough sort of office thing that was really neat and grid lacks enough real motorsports it has kind of a touring car category and kind of a time attack thing but with the exception of the le mans 24 hour race uh, none of the rest of it is quite sort of an actual class not like you had you know the btcc your v8 supercars the dtm cars and so on um you know all easily recognizable series in race drive you had single makes like the gtv sixes um not gtv sixes sorry just the alpha gtvs and and that kind of thing it just felt more like actual real motorsport in toka race driver whereas grid just misses out on that and while later series or later entrance into the grid series uh, like grid autosport for example does have a little bit more in the way of uh, actual car classes it's not quite as good or a game as the first one although demolition derby in the first grid was absolutely fantastic there was there was an awful awful lot of fun i think the first grid did have a uh, touring car kind of touring cars it was like a bmw and a chevy and maybe something else i can't remember but um yeah no, not like the full btcc grid that uh, race driver had so that's why grid didn't make it in also you know likes of uh neve speed most wanted and so on i didn't put in the list uh, while well, most wanted is a good game it's a very good game in fact don't get me wrong and you know the first underground was a good game they didn't make it in the list simply because i enjoyed underground 2 more um i, I would put underground 2 as the best of the need for speed games yeah most wanted and uh, i quite like carbon actually i remember carbon was one of the first 360 games i had <laughs> but uh, i like carbon for the police chases because it was silly fun but uh, yeah that that's why some of those games would uh, would mid out 
simply because they had there is there's another one in that series that is just to me a simply better game in case of grid if we talk a race driver in case of the need for speeds it would be uh, underground too so the next game that uh, we come across a road trip adventure I love the aesthetics of Road Trip Adventure. I love the idea behind Road Trip Adventure. You're a little sort of toy car in this world of toy cars and you go around completing missions. It's sort of an RPG car toy game and that's absolutely fantastic. Also with added slightly wonky translations in places, which is extra amusing. There's some car football. It's a bit wonky in terms of physics department, but there's car football to go and do. There's all sorts of little mini games. There's some rock climbing. You can fit rockets to your car. You can fit wings to your car. You can fit sort of water ski things to it and generally have an awful lot of fun. It's a silly game, but I very much enjoyed uh, my time on the most part playing it. We'll get to that in, in, in a little bit. Yeah, just that, the whole look of the game is fantastic. I would love a sort of up-to-date version of Roto. I think it would be absolutely excellent. The downsides to the game first of all as i said the physics at times could be a little bit a little bit wonky it could be asking a little bit too much of the game uh, the likes of the football while it was cool that it was there it, it's certainly uh, no rocket league also if the cars ever got airborne uh, things tended to go a little bit uh, a little bit skew with uh, however it was still plenty of fun to uh, to go racing with the real downside to the game and the reason why it didn't make it onto the top 10 list is certainly as you get later on in it there is a lot of grinding for money to try and make progress towards the end uh, while you can mostly get away with getting your car up to spec to do one of the one of the last i think it might actually be the last championship you have to enter it as a team so you need your teammates to be running fast enough stuff and just the amount of time it takes to get the get the cars fitted with the right parts it's just so long the reason why i stopped doing road to adventure videos i just couldn't face doing more grinding to get money for for my teammates to uh, complete the final the final bits of racing and that's a bit of a shame i think if they, they could have balanced the game just that little bit better so that as the time you got to, to that end of the at the end of the the career you would have enough money so that you only maybe had to do an extra few races here and there yeah it's a little bit of a shame but uh that does kind of suck really <laughs> at uh, the end of the game apart from that though it is an excellent bizarre wondrous adventure through the world of uh, of toy cars uh, again well yeah towards the end it might get a little bit grindy i do highly recommend you check it out i believe i don't know if it's on the us uh ps3 store i know certainly in england you can i don't know about in, in the rest of europe certainly i could find it on the ps3 store um and you can download it and play it I, I do recommend you have a go with it if you haven't because there's really nothing quite else like it uh, a lot of fun a lot of crazy crazy fun uh even if at times it does get a, a little bit too grindy for me we come next to a street legal racing red line a game that quite simply has the best car customization there is. There, there is nothing out there that really gets close to uh, to street legal. It is, I guess, maybe my summer car. Again, you could put my summer car in in this list as well. It's uh, it's one of those that my summer car is very very good at building the Satsuma, and that's great fun. But after that, you kind of you run out a little bit uh, of stuff to do. Street legal, you know, all about building cars, and you build cars. You can build cars up completely from just the chassis you can decide what engine you want to put in the car uh you can do all sorts of bits and pieces with the vehicle and yeah for, for such an old game as well it's a, a pretty damn old game now having that level of customization is absolutely phenomenal and the damage on the vehicles is pretty damn impressive as well when you crank that up to maybe not quite all the way to max because then you bump a curb and it all disintegrates but put it somewhere that's uh, vaguely reasonable and the damage model is actually really really quite impressive the downsides is, is, is as far as being a game goes well yes there is more races to do and for this i'm talking about the steam version i'll get into that in a minute actually um, there are there are more more races to do you know there's drag races to do in the city there's various circuits to go around um etc however it's still sort of quite difficult to to earn money it's still it's more about the car building rather than the actual driving and racing certainly for me at least the way that i've, I've played it i tend to just cheat in money have fun building the car but um, you know maybe go for a drive around the city but the actual racing and, and drag racing and trying to progress through a career mode normally it just i don't know it just doesn't seem to be quite balanced and doesn't really seem to hold much interest to me compared to the car customization and the other reason that the other problem that holds it back is there are three or four different versions the steam version is the most stable 
still has a tendency to crash an awful, awful lot. I think it has got better has got better recently, but it's still quite easy to make the game break. And if we exclude mods for a minute, if we just have the base version, uh, it doesn't quite... It doesn't, uh, again, it might have changed. I don't think it will have done, though, uh, <laughs> by the time this video goes out. Um, it doesn't let you put any engine in any car. You have to use mods to enable that. And while there's a fair amount of vehicles to go through... It's not the not necessarily the greatest of selection, and not being able to do the, the wacky any engine in any car is a, is a little bit of a of a shame. Yeah, it can be fixed through mods, but uh, when we talk, start talking about mods, that kind of makes this list a little bit redundant. So yeah, as far as the base game goes, it it's great customization. Again, it's another game I highly recommend that uh, that you give a go because the customization is absolutely second to none. But be prepared for it to often crash, and it's much more fun if you're just cheating money and mess around with cars. Honestly, the racing itself is mediocre. Next up, we have got Split Second. This another game that very it was actually on the top ten list for quite a while, but uh, eventually got pushed down. However, Split Second is it is a game that's kind of like no other in some way. It's a, a loose storyline is you're in a TV show around an abandoned city and you kind of go racing with crazy cars and, and much silliness happens. And the way that it all unfolds is as you're drifting, you're drafting behind someone's car or you do some do some jumps, I think, are the ways you, you gain this power play ability. And that means that you can then affect stuff in the world around you, whether that be exploding a container, whether that be perhaps creating a shortcut for you to try and get through to gain ground on your opponents or whether it be dropping a plane on top of them. If you save up enough of it, you can get like the the track's main main attraction essentially and that can be anything from dropping an entire plane on the map or exploding a power station or knocking over an aircraft control tower and completely changing the course of the lap it's really really spectacular i love the ui on the on the the racing as well it's lovely and minimalist there's lots of sort of fun mini games aside from the actual racing there's one where you have to overtake trucks that are throwing off explosive barrels at you there's one where an attack helicopter comes and cause some mischief for you and so on it is uh, completely and utterly spectacular spectacular session racing around and it's it's kind of a shame that it's often a, a lot forgotten you know there was never a sequel i doubt there's a sequel planned which is a massive shame because it is an absolutely phenomenal phenomenal game the downside and the reason the reason why this didn't make it on to the top 10 list is that the handling physics are yeah just not quite there it's not bad to drive with don't get me wrong uh, yes you know it's, it's very much an arcade racer but at times i found myself fighting the car when i went back to uh, to play it yeah while it is incredibly incredibly cool it's at times uh, the handling is just a little a little bit on the on the weird side there'll be bits where you will slightly lose control of your car you know you'll be coming out of, of a power slide and everything will get a little bit twitchy and then you'll end up off the road or you'll end up in a wall and it's just just a little bit imprecise and in a game like this where everything is exploding around you and you really really want fine control just that little bit of uncertainty is what holds it back. I have no doubt with sequels you could sort it out into one of the best racing games of all time. Unfortunately, yeah, that uh, didn't happen. Also, another downside with this type of racing, it is quite easy to feel a little bit cheated. Sometimes the AIs will shoot off in the distance and you won't stand a hope in hell of catching them. Sometimes you'll shoot off in the distance and then catch up will bring everyone up towards you. And yeah, other times, you know, you'll be miles out in front and then one lucky power play from an AI behind with two corners to go will wreck your race. Admittedly, you might be doing it to the AIs from time to time. On the most part, the races are entertaining enough that um, you don't feel too cheated. But when it happens on the last race of a championship that you need to get a certain position to progress and you've got to restart everything all over again, it can get a little bit frustrating. So, yeah, put those two together and it just slips out of, out of the top ten. It's, again, all of these games pretty much on this list, if you haven't played them, I do still highly recommend that you do. Split Second in particular, a much a much underappreciated game, I feel. Also, a little bit Blur is a similar a similar thing. Blur is a great, great party game uh, that got completely and utterly forgotten and killed a studio, which is, is a sad, sad story. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely... Definitely, I think actually these two came out at a similar time, Split Second and Blur. Definitely check out both of them if you, if you can find a copy of Blur. I don't think they sold, sold about 10. I have one of them. But um, yeah, it's, Split Second is, is excellent, excellent silly fun.
We move on next to Stuntman, a driving game that tried something a little bit, a little bit different. I actually never played Stuntman when it initially came out. I remember having the demo of it. I remember playing the absolute crap out of the demo. I never got around to actually owning the game. However, I went back and I've got both of the uh, the Stuntman games actually, and they are they're something different. They set you up with the uh, various scenes that you have to complete. Uh, starting off with relatively simple stunts like smash into a barrel, do a handbrake turn, drive close to something, and then you've got to chain them all together, probably climaxing in a big jump or a big explosion somewhere. It sounds like my sort of thing, really, and you can complete a scene, and then you move on to the next one and do a different chain of stunts around a different area, perhaps with a different car, and so on. And it's a really interesting, it's almost like a, a racing puzzle game. You've got to fit together all of these little pieces to make up this one spectacular scene. Always good fun was watching the cutscenes at the end when they kind of put together the movie with your dodgy driving. It was kind of always a little bit of a challenge to see could you make a cock up in your driving that made it into the sort of movie trailer so it looked stupid. That was a good fun mini game to, uh, <laughs> to be playing. But uh, yeah, it's a great idea. Absolutely, absolutely great idea. And both of the Stuntman games uh, I, I have actually quite enjoyed. There's also an arena to go and create your own stunts. So you can go create uh, your own crazy, crazy contraptions and, and try and create all sorts of spectacular spectacularness. Many roles if you want to. The downside is, <laughs> again, much like Flat Out, one of my uh, my abiding memories of Stuntman is is frustration. Yeah, even even with a demo when I was playing it a lot lot younger, is that it can get incredibly frustrating. And the more you play through it, the more frustrating it gets. The more technical the sort of scenarios, the tighter the time frames, and so on. There is no checkpoints, and some of the stunts can go on for quite a while. And you will you know get. I don't know, a minute into one and then make a cock up and then have to restart. And you can just waste so much time uh, in getting through one. It can get quite damn frustrating. And some of them do get really bloody fiddly and really, really tight with time. And it's, it gets to the point where it's just not quite fun anymore. I love the idea behind Stuntman. And again, it's another one that I would love to see a modern version of. And loads of these games I'd love to see a modern version of. Stuntman in particular is an incredible, incredible, interesting idea. And a slightly different take on the whole racing or racing slash driving genre of game but it was just that little bit too frustrating at times with uh, some very very arsy uh, arsy stunting checkpointing occasionally dodgy hitbox on certain stunts etc yeah good good fun when it wasn't being a complete arsehole i think is the is the way to put it and finally we have test drive unlimited i'm going to pick out two Primarily because it had just a few more features. Both the Test Drive Unlimited games, though, are, are definitely worthy of being on here. Test Drive does something that very, very few games are, are able to do, and that is create a sense of ownership with your cars, with your garages. Kind of Gran Turismo and Forza, yeah, do to an extent, but Test Drive is the best at it. Um, because... We, you kind of own houses. You you buy these properties around the map and then you can walk into your garage. And then you can go and have a look at your car collection. And then you leave that garage, you can drive across the island, and there's another, another house that you might own that has some more cars in it. It does a fantastic job of this, this sense of ownership over all of these exotic cars. And then you have the entirety of Hawaii to go and explore. It is a humongous map. Okay, it's not quite the crew level of humongous, but still it is, certainly for the Test Drive Unlimited 1, there wasn't very much out there that was bigger than Hawaii to go and drive around. In in Unlimited 2, you had Hawaii and Ibiza to go around. I have a sneaking suspicion the developers fancied a holiday and decided on those two islands, but uh, yeah, they were huge islands. And unlike uh, most games, you were completely free to go and explore them. You want to you see a mountain in the distance and you want to go take a car up it, you you go for it. And we have in fact a long time ago you, you can go absolutely anywhere you want. You can take whatever car you want up the side of a mountain. Your Zonda might not get particularly far up the side of the mountain. However, you are welcome to uh, to try and do it. And that sense of freedom and the sense of ownership put it together is an incredible game. And the way that you buy cars from the showrooms themselves is Nothing does showrooms as well as Test Drive because you actually drive to a showroom and then you walk around a showroom to look at cars. Uh, that's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. You are, you know, you're free to walk around in first person around the showroom. You can get in the cars, you can start them up, you can mess around with the doors and the windows, and then you can do that all in multiplayer. 
Certainly now the servers are a lot quieter. When the game first came out, you go into a showroom when the servers worked. I should point that out. Uh, you go into a showroom and there'd be five or six other people looking around at the cars. And that, yeah, to me that, that was, it was absolutely incredible and it's an experience that you don't get in any other game at all. Nothing else does that as well as Test Drive. The downside, and it is a pretty big downside though, is that driving physics are pretty bad. They are just about serviceable. That is about the nicest thing I can say. Anyone who has played Test Drive Unlimited 2, you're going to know exactly what I mean. They spent more time on the boob jiggle physics than they did, I think, on the handling physics. You go and play the game and you'll quickly understand why, <laughs> why I say that. The handling is not particularly good. And it is such a shame because I still think Test Drive Unlimited 2 is fantastic, even though the cars don't really handle very well. You can turn the assists off or you can turn the assists on and whatever you do, they're still not great. They're kind of a little bit unpredictable. It's just, yeah, a bit of a mess. Which, yeah, is a massive, massive shame because what is there is absolutely incredible. But yeah, it, it, the cars handle a, a little bit crappy. So yeah, there we go. That is the uh, the shortlist of games that didn't quite make it on to the uh, the top ten list. However, that is uh, going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. <laughs>